Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Hey, you know, our world is addicted to power. I mean, people want power. Governments want power. You probably want power. I mean, we do. Jesus demonstrates and discusses power in our passage today. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, beginning of verse 22 says, Then a demon-oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus, and he healed him so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David, the Messiah? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, Oh no, it's only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will uh, fall, and, and every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no and house divided against itself will stand. None of them. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house, plunder his goods, unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed, indeed he may plunder his house. Uh, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Now, uh, this is a passage about power, and just three real quick truths I want to share with you and then talk about the one that uh, plagues a lot of Christians. First of all, Jesus has all power and authority, which is why he could cast out demons, because he's stronger than demons, which should give us comfort and encouragement the Apostle John later on says, greater is he that is in you, the Holy Spirit, than he that is in the world. So you don't have to be afraid ever, even of the demonic, even of all the scary movies, stupid stuff that isn't real, uh, because you have more power than they do, because the Holy Spirit of God is in you. He's the strong man. The, no demon can take possession of you or hold you. Secondly, the Pharisees were jealous and petty. And so what they did, because they couldn't attack Jesus, they attacked his source of power and said, well, it's by the power of Satan that you're casting out Satan. And of course, Jesus used that in a very quotable line, a house divided against itself can't stand. And, uh, and then he pointed out, and I, I, I can just hear the sarcasm dripping in Jesus' voice. Uh, if I'm casting out demons by Beelzebul, then who are your sons casting him out by? And just long mic drop pause right there. Uh, he goes on to talk about more, though. But uh, the Pharisees were just jealous and petty, and they were just attacking anything they could at all. The third thing is just that whole conversation about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And, and I share this because I grew up in church, and this was a conversation I heard a lot. Uh, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is accusing the work of the Holy Spirit of being evil. That's what they were doing with Jesus. You're casting out demons by the power of Satan, and yet that was the work of the Holy Spirit through Jesus. He was casting out demons. And Jesus teaches a lesson. And, and he warns them about doing that. Now, here's the, the part I want to address. There's a lot of Christians who get freaked out by this passage. And they start by saying this. Oh, what if I committed the, you know, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? What if then I you know, can't be redeemed? Look, if you grew up in church, this was a big confusing issue. And so let me just share you some thoughts with you that hopefully will put you at ease and make your day better. First of all, if you're worried that you might have blasphemed the Holy Spirit, you haven't. You haven't. Because it's not something you can do accidentally, number one. And number two, uh, you, if you've blasphemed the Holy Spirit, you don't care. There's no conviction. There's no worry. You just don't care. You're just like completely cold and callous. And the reason that's the case is because the Holy Spirit is the voice of conviction. And if the Holy Spirit is done with you because you've committed blasphemy against him, then there's no more conviction in your life of sin. There's no more conviction, no more worry, no more fear about whether or not you're pleasing God or not because you don't care anymore. And, and if you want to see what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is capable of, all you have to do is look at the acts of terrorism and atrocities that have been committed uh, in our lifetimes and even in recent memory. 
to understand what it is to really be without God in every way in your life. So uh, Jesus has all power and authority. He lives in you. So you've got the power over this world and you don't have to be afraid of anything or worry. And, and if you're a follower of Jesus, you definitely don't have to worry about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So rejoice in the power of Jesus and join him in his mission of life change. Have a great day. God bless.